Well, good morning, good morning, Breakthrough family. It is so good to be together. Welcome everyone joining us online. If you're downstairs, make your way upstairs. We're about to get started and you do not want to miss out because we're about to worship our King. Can I invite you to stand with me? We're going to go into a time of praise and worship. Isn't the, the rain that we've been having just glorious as the Lord pours out the source of life, of nourishment upon the land? Lord, we, we say, come and pour out life upon your people, spiritual life that we will be well and whole and strong in you. I want to read to us Psalm 103 verse 1. It says, Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Invitation for us that everything within you might praise the Lord. All within me. And so why don't we just start to lift up our hands to Him and just say, Lord, this morning all within me is here to praise you all within me is here to worship you because you are worthy of it all you are worthy of my everything and thank you lord that as we as we worship you that your presence comes that we get to experience you we get to see you we get to feel you thank you lord for your presence with your people we worship you let your kingdom come let your will be done it's our kingdom value this day. There will be kingdom prioritizers, putting him first. So, Lord, in this moment, this day, we put you first. And may you remain first. Let your kingdom come. Let's worship. As in heaven, so on earth, now let your kingdom come. As in heaven, so on earth, now let your kingdom come. As in heaven, so on earth, now let your kingdom come. As in heaven, so on earth, now let your kingdom come.
ocean doors are opening, the wilds are springing up. Light is driving out the dark as your kingdom comes. Oh, ancient doors are opening, the wilds are springing up. Light is driving out the dark as your kingdom comes.
what you can do oh god of wonders your power has no end the things you've done before in greater measure you will do again because there's no prison wall you can't break through possible There's no broken body you can't raise No soul that you can save All things are possible The darkest night You can light it up You can light it up Should my heart feel what you've defeated? I will trust in you alone. There's no prison wall you can't break through. No mountain you can't move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise. No. So that you can say all things are possible. Come awaken your people, come awaken your city, for God of revival, pour it out. You say, am Come awaken your city, 
Come awaken your people Oh God of revival Pour it out Every stronghold will crumble I hear the chains in the ground Oh God of revival Pour it out Pour it out Oh pour it out Jesus Holy breathing air of heaven this morning. Good. 
through this life we live and on to eternity our endless praise we cry Jesus be glorified all through this life
praise the Lord. My soul, all my inmost being, praise His holy name. Oh, He's a holy God. He's a mighty God. It carries on that Psalm 103. It says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with love, with compassion, who satisfies the desires, your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Oh, what a mighty God. We worship you, Lord. So many things happening in worship this morning. Just a, a strong sense of His presence and, and different prophetic senses and words coming this morning. The one that, like the disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, and, and they recognize afterwards, weren't their hearts burning within them? That this morning, the Lord is making hearts burn for Jesus. This morning, the Lord is awakening hearts. He's making hearts come alive, burning with passion. Another word that the Lord is removing the staleness that might have been with the previous season and that there's a fresh outpouring, there's a fresh move, there's a fresh sense of His anointing oil coming upon you, bringing refreshing and bringing life, bringing newness. For some of us, it's, we've, been, we've been struggling with sickness, with disease. I want to remind you that as we worship our holy God, that we forget not all of His benefits. He heals all of our diseases. He heals all of our sickness. This is our God. You know, for some of you, perhaps you've been struggling with, with life, with decisions, and, and you need forgiveness. He's good and faithful to forgive you of all of your sins. Because what does He want to give you this morning? He wants to give you a crown. A crown of love and of His compassion. This is our Father. This is our God. He's so good. And so we're going to just sing this chorus again. And I want to encourage you, whatever it is that you're needing breakthrough for, any of those things I might have mentioned, if, if those make sense to you, if you're needing breakthrough in those things, then just say, Lord, I need that. I need that this morning. Reach out to Him and say, God, I need that breakthrough. I need healing. I need forgiveness. I need renewing. I need my heart to come alive again. Let's, let's trust Him to come and bring the breakthrough that we need. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cry.
you're the God of the breakthrough and you're bringing breakthrough this morning. You're bringing breakthrough this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for wholeness, for healing, for hearts coming alive, for forgiveness, that you remove our sin as far as the east is from the west and you crown us with your love, with your compassion. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so we say, Lord, come and have your way. As we started out our worship this morning, may your kingdom come. We choose to put your kingdom first in our lives. And that as we do that, thank you that all these other things fall into place. But as a people, we say, Lord, we choose you. Lord, we put you first. Lord, we want your name to be honored, to be glorified in our lives, in this church, in your city. Come and have your way, King Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we just give the Lord just a celebration, clap offering, a shout? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Tell your, the person sitting next to you that they have a crown of love and compassion from the Father. Go ahead, take a seat. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you and to pray together and worship the Lord. Um, to our online community, welcome. If you're not feeling well, we miss you. Please get well soon. And do we have any first-time visitors today? Please raise your hand. Welcome. We can do better breakthrough. Yeah. Welcome. So after the service, please join us downstairs. We'd like to connect with you, love on you, and get to know you better. We can now release the children and the youth. And if you are a high schooler and you're new, we extend the, the, the invitation to you. Go down there and make friends um, and have a good time. And everyone else, please um, enjoy the video announcement. Good morning. Welcome to a great time together in the presence of God. Here are some things to take note of. We have great news. Tracy Evans from Reach Africa will be with us next Sunday, the 14th of April, for our Sunday morning services, as well as our revival night that evening. Tracy's life has been marked by radical obedience to the Lord and seeing Him move powerfully and in miraculous ways. Invite your friends and family as we learn from Tracy and hear these powerful testimonies. Also taking place next Sunday, the 14th of April, is our Generosity Table Sunday. You can bring any items you would like to bless someone with to our offices during the week or drop them off in the tea garden before the Sunday service. Let's celebrate living generously. We would like to invite you to join the Divine Intervention Approach Prayer Meeting taking place on Thursday, the 18th of April from 7 p.m. at Breakthrough. This is a dedicated prayer meeting hosted by various church leaders in our area, partnering with the SAPS to pray for reduction of crime in our community. Please diarize this date and come pray for those who dedicate their lives to keep us safe and who stand up for justice. Our next family table is taking place Sunday, the 21st of April. This is a shared lunch where everybody and anybody in Breakthrough can join for a time of fellowship and connection over a meal. Anyone joining is asked to contribute to the lunch by bringing any picnic style eats like cold meats, rolls, pizza, chicken, salads or fruits to be placed on the communal table as we all share in various eats together. See you there. Let us pray for the youth, for the mayor, for the church, for, for marriages. marriages, for the leaders in charge of all the money, for people to know the difference between right and wrong, for our family, for our educational leaders, for a good 
and prosperous city. For our sporting leaders. For media. For our den. For kingdom justice. For our strongholds and difficult situations. For the arts, entertainment and music. For the leaders of our country. You've heard of Let Us Worship? Now get ready for Let Us Pray. Join us on the 1st of May at New Covenant Church, Bryanston for a day of prayer. We'll spend time with believers from all over, praying and interceding for our nation, its leaders, our upcoming election and more. Get your free tickets at quicket.co.za today. We'd love to have you as part of our online community. You can connect with us via Facebook, Instagram, Apple Podcast, Spotify and YouTube. We'll see you on the digital side. Enjoy the morning with us. Good morning, family. Are you doing good? I sound a little bit more enthusiastic than you. I'm going to ask you to stand as we go into a time of meet and greet. Everyone on this block, move at least 10 meters to your right. Everyone on this block, at least 10 meters to your left. And let's do some meet and greet. Meet at least four people you didn't know. Go, 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 go. All right, now that you met those people, stay where you are. Don't go to your seats. Just stay where you are. Now you're going to pray with at least three or four people. All right? So Jesus said, my Father's house will be a house of prayer. All right? So we're going to pray for the elections coming up next month. All right? So make groups of three or four. And I'm just going to give you some pointers that we need to pray about. All right? I'm going to keep it simple. For, for going into the elections, leading up to the elections, that there won't be any sabotages on the infrastructure, right? During the elections, that it will be just and fair. And after the elections, that the people that won will be gracious in victory, and the people that lost will be gracious in defeat. All right, let's go. Yeah, thank you, Father, that you are good. Thank you, Father, that there won't be take any manipulations leading up to the elections. Yeah, Father, and I pray for a fair and just process during the elections, Father, that there won't be any ballots lost. Yeah, Father, and I also just pray afterwards that there will be peace in the nation, that the right ministers will be elected in the right places. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
morning, good morning, family. My name is Elise. I get to share with you on tithes and offering. And you know, tithes is about giving. Um, and if I may use this illustration, if, if, um, if my child would ask me for breakfast for a Kit Kat, then if I was a decent parent, I would rather give them future life. If you're a dietitian, I know you're struggling with this. Okay, it's just an illustration. Why? Because future life also has a sugar kick in it, okay? There's lots of sugar in future life, but it has a heck of a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. So when the kid asks for something, what myself as a parent want to give them is more than what they're actually asking for. And when we talk about giving in church, we want to learn how to give in line with kingdom giving. So we need to see how God gives. And I want to point you to a story that we know very well. It's the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15. And I just want to show you this. In Luke 15, verse 11, it says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. Now, the Greek word for estate in this passage, it means property, stuff, Kit Kats. It's a son asking for a Kit Kat. So we would expect the father to then give him a Kit Kat. But the passage goes on and he says, so he, the father, divided his property between them. One would expect it's the same Greek word. The son asked for estate, and the father gives an estate. But it's not the same Greek word. The word used here is the Greek word bios. You see, what the father gave was bios. And do you know what the word bios means? Life. The son asks for a Kit Kat. The father gives life. He gives future life. You see, this is how God the Father gives, because He knows what we need. So when He asks something of us, whether He asks worship, can we give more than He asks? When He asks obedience, can we give abundantly? Because that's how He gives. So when He asks of our finances, can we learn to give abundantly? So in church here, we have three different ways of giving. We can give through EFT, Snap Scan, and card payments. Please, we ask that you don't use credit cards downstairs, but your normal bank account cards. And what we also do here is we do declarations. Declarations is a way when we, we declare what we believe. Now, most of us who are here often have said these things over and over. May I encourage you today to abundantly declare what we as a family believe. So would you like to join me as we stand up and we declare we want to give abundantly because God has given us future life. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created. Dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations. Souls and more souls from every generation saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as you join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon me. So I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a good day and the Lord is doing wonderful things. How many of you guys were around last weekend when we celebrated the victory of the cross and uh, the resurrection, wasn't it just a beautiful time as we gathered on Friday and then again on Sunday? And uh, just so grateful for what the Lord is doing. Um, and, and He's really just pouring out His, His Holy Spirit upon the church, upon us. And, uh, and these are exciting days to be alive. They really, really are. 
Um, bef before I, I jump into the word this morning, John and Lisa send their love. They are down with a bit of a flu bug at the moment, and so they're, they're resting. Chris is also down, and I know a number of others have, have been sick. So we're going to keep trusting the Lord for, for breakthrough and healing, and grateful for you healthy ones that are with us this morning. But uh, in Joel chapter 2, I'm going to read from verse 28 to verse 29. Uh, but as we speak to, to different church leaders across the country, as uh, we've visited different churches, um, we're just seeing all over the place that God is moving and that there's this freshness in the, the realm of the Spirit as the Holy Spirit is, is just kind of stirring His people and there's this excitement, there's this hunger, there's this longing for Him uh, which the Holy Spirit is stirring in His people. Has anyone, anyone noticed that? Thank you for the five that have. <laughs> the scripture says we're two or more in agreement. <laughs> we have an unstoppable force. Nothing can stop what God is doing. So he has this prophetic word from uh, the old covenant, the, the book of Joel, chapter 2. It says, and afterward I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy and your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. There's this prophetic word about what God wants to do. God's desire for mankind. That he will be able to one day pour out his spirit upon all people. And that all people, when we are receiving the Holy Spirit, that we will be able to prophesy. Sons and daughters will prophesy. So we're going to go on a bit of a, a journey over here quickly because last weekend we celebrated the cross, we celebrated the resurrection, um, and then post uh, the resurrection, for the next 40 days, Jesus appears to his disciples. Uh, we can read, I think it's eight different accounts where Jesus appears to his disciples after his resurrection, and he's teaching the message of the kingdom uh, I referenced the road to Emmaus earlier on when we closed our worship. Uh, and so even on the one account, Jesus appears to a group of about 500 people. Uh, we see this in the book of Corinthians. And so Jesus, for 40 days, is appearing before he then ascends after 40 days after his, his death, burial, resurrection. And then 10 days later, another significant thing happens. But let's have a look at, at the scriptures here because we see Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse 11. John the baptizer, he's speaking about what is to come. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Again, as we close the worship, we reference that your, your heart's starting to come alive and, and burn with passion, with a fire. The Holy Spirit pours out fire with, uh, with His presence upon us, in us, through us, that there's this passion that gets ignited. John the baptizer talking about Jesus that's going to come, and what is He going to do? He's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. We then see Jesus telling us about uh, what is to come. So Joel prophesies it in the Old Covenant. John the baptizer speaks of what is to come uh, by Jesus. Now Jesus himself, he's now telling his disciples what is to come. And we read this uh, account in Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 9, as Luke is, is retelling what Jesus had said. So he says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes. 
and a cloud hid him from their sight. So this is Jesus. Now, final words he's giving to the disciples before his ascension. He's died, he's been buried, he's resurrected, he spends 40 days with the disciples, and now this is his final message before he ascends up to heaven. What is he speaking about? That there's a promise. There's a Holy Spirit that's yet to come. And there's a command, wait, wait until the Holy Spirit comes. And so the disciples do this. In Acts chapter 2, the next chapter, we, we read the account of this promise that was promised from Joel, spoken about by John the baptizer, spoken about by Jesus. And now it happens in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. The day of Pentecost, it's, it's seven sevens, it's 50, 50 days after the resurrection. Um, and so this is the day that we celebrate. On the 19th of May, we'll celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Verse 2, suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Joel prophesies it. John the baptizer speaks about it. Jesus speaks about it. And now we read it happens. Acts chapter 2, it happens. It's still happening. It hasn't stopped happening. Jesus is still pouring out the Spirit upon His church. We see this a little bit later on in the book of Acts again. Acts chapter 19, uh, verse 1 to verse 6. I know I'm covering a lot of Scripture, but track with the story. Uh, um, let's read Acts 19. When Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues, and they prophesied. Now let's go right back to the beginning of where we started today. Joel chapter 2, the longing of God. What was the longing? That he will pour out his Spirit upon who? All people. And what is the fruit of him pouring out his Spirit upon all people? That my sons and daughters will prophesy. Are there any sons and daughters here? If you believe... And Father God, in Jesus, you're a son, you're a daughter. You've been adopted into his royal family. We're sons, we're daughters. And so he wants all of his sons and daughters to be able to prophesy. And so the Lord's kind of working this whole thing together that we as his people might be empowered by the Holy Spirit to live a supernatural life and that we will see the Lord working through us, that the Holy Spirit will flow through us and that we will see God do incredible and wonderful things. Now, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism, just to quickly touch on it, it means to be like fully submerged. It's like, it's like when the Titanic went under, it was baptized. It was fully submerged. That's kind of what that word means. It's like if you had to take a, a white shirt and you had to baptize it in a red dye. You, you don't just touch the, the corner of the shirt in and the whole shirt becomes red. No, you, you dunk that whole white garment into a bucket of red dye. And what happens is while that red, all that white shirt is in the red dye, it changes. It takes on the nature of the very thing it's being baptized in. 
that white shirt starts to take on the nature of the red dye. And when it comes up out of that dye, well, it's no longer white. It's taken on a new nature from the thing it was baptized in. It's now a red garment. It's now a red shirt. You see, when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, everything about us changes because we take on the nature of the one we've been baptized in. We get totally transformed. That's why the scripture says we're a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Using the analogy, the white has gone, you are now red. New nature, new creation. It's what happens when we get baptized. And as we get filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, these are good days uh, to pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I think on Pentecost Sunday, 19th of May, we're going we're gonna to take time and we're going to pray for, for those that haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. But with the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes a whole bunch of amazing gifts. Come on, anyone like gifts? Anyone, you know, gifts is your love language? <laughs> See, God knew you, and so he, he has gifts for you, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but the beautiful thing is that these gifts are not there just for your sake, but they're there for everyone else's sake. And so with these gifts that we get in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, we get to do things that we can't ordinarily do. And so we, we see in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, as, as Paul's teaching to the, the, the church in Corinth about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as he's bringing some structure, some order, and what does he do as he starts out his teaching on the gifts? He says in verse 1, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. This is, this is God speaking to us. Breakthrough Life Church, when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I do not want you to be uninformed. I want you to be informed. I want you to know. I want you to understand. Carries on in verse 7. It says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given, that you can be high and mighty and powerful, that you can receive your gift because it's your love language, uh, because it makes you feel comfortable, because it makes you feel powerful. No, why do you receive the gift? What is it there for? It's there for the common good. That means that God has gifted you, and you're gifted not for your sake, but you're gifted for the person sitting next to your sake. You're gifted not for, for your sake alone, but you're gifted for the sake of the person in the office cubicle next door to you, or for the children in your classroom, or for the person that lives next door to you. You're gifted not for your sake, but you're gifted for the common good. We jump then to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, but before we jump to the chapter 14, we mustn't forget chapter 13, because what is 1 Corinthians chapter 13? It's the chapter of love. It's the chapter that's often read and preached about at weddings. But, um, but actually the context here is in the context of operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that when we're operating in the gifts, that love is the foundation and the driving force behind all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's the driving force behind all ministry. You see, when we, when we operate in the gifts in the absence of love, well, what does it say? We're just a resounding gong just makes a noise that disappears. There's no fruit. And so 1 Corinthians 12, don't be uninformed about the gifts. The gifts are there for the common good. Chapter 13, the chapter about love that we do and we move and we operate in the gifts because of our love for one another and our love for the Lord. The love that we have from the Lord is what drives us. It's what compels us. It's what inspires us to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We then get to chapter 14, and now Paul says, follow the way of love. All of the things that are so beautifully put out in terms of describing what love is in chapter 13. Now follow that, and while you're doing that, eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. So we're told, don't be uninformed. We're told that the gifts are for the common good. We're told that we're supposed to operate in the gifts from a heart and a position of love. And now we're being told that we're to eagerly desire the gifts. That means that there's a responsibility upon us. That means we have to do something because if you're eagerly desiring something, it means you're longing for something, you're seeking for something, you're pursuing something. You have some action that's required. It's not that you just sit back and wait for God to do everything. No, you're, you're leaning in and you're saying, okay, God, you said we're to eagerly desire the gifts. 
And so I'm, I'm doing that. I want to I receive the gifts that you have for me through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've got the Holy Spirit, but there's gifts, and I want to unlock these gifts. I want to desire these gifts. I want to operate in these gifts. And which gift should we desire the most? The gift of prophecy. Can you see again? We're going back to Joel chapter 2. Holy Spirit will be poured out upon my people, all people, and sons and daughters will prophesy. Now we're being told we should eagerly desire the gifts and especially the gift of prophecy. And now you're sitting there and maybe you're visiting, maybe it's your first time in church and you're saying, what is this preacher going on about? I don't even know what prophecy is. <laughs> so prophecy is very simple. It's just hearing a message from God for someone else. In the same way as if, uh, you know, someone comes and gives you a message to pass on to someone else, um, maybe you're... Your, your mom or dad, they don't know how to use WhatsApp, and so someone's trying to get hold of them, and they WhatsApp you as the son or daughter to say, please tell your mom and dad this and this and that. You're a messenger via WhatsApp. <laughs> you see, some of us um, don't yet know Jesus. Some people that maybe live next door to you, that work next door to you, they, they don't yet know the Father. They don't know that there's a God in heaven who speaks and that he wants to speak to us. They don't know that he has a crown of love and compassion that he wants to give them. And, uh, and so their WhatsApp is broken. <laughs> They're not able to receive communication. And so you get, to, you get to receive a message from the Lord and then convey that message to those people that are not, not able to, to hear or receive for themselves. And so that's all it is. It's just hearing from God and sharing God's message, God's heart, to, to someone else. We stay in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, because now the scripture maps out what is this gift there for. So we're getting messages and we're sharing messages from the Lord. How do we do this? It says, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. So yeah, the, the scripture is mapping out very plainly what the gift of prophecy is there for. We're hearing messages from the Lord for people, and those messages are messages of strength, message, messages of courage, messages of comfort. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I know there's no one in the room yet today, but I had a sense that, that maybe there's one person, it might be someone online, um, that you might know someone that needs strength or courage or comfort. I know there's no one in the room. But there might be someone. Is there anyone in the room that knows someone that might need strength, courage, comfort? Okay, I see one hand. Okay, oh, oh goodness, okay. All right, there are more than what I thought. <laughs> this... Come on, I'm pretty sure every single one of us in the room needs strength, needs courage, needs comfort in some way, shape, or form in our life. And how much more the people uh, living in our city that, that don't even know Jesus, how much more do they need strength? Do they need courage? Do they need comfort? Because we've got the security of knowing we've got a, a Father that loves us. Every Sunday we gather together, we encourage one another, we receive instruction, we receive encouragement. And so we've got so much reason to be encouraged and to live a life of hope. But for, for those that don't yet know Jesus, man, they, they need hope. They need strength. They need courage. And you know what? Christ in you is the hope of glory. You carry the hope that they need. You carry the life that they need. You carry the strength, the comfort, the encouragement that they need. And you carry it in the form of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And so we've got gifts. And what do we do with these gifts? We're living in the day that God longed for in Joel chapter 2. We are living in that day. These are exciting days to be alive. So, so exciting. And so in Philippians chapter 4, verse 9, it says, Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. You see, there's things we've received in the Holy Spirit and what are we to do with these things? We're to put them into practice. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14 and verse 15, it says, do not neglect your gift. Let's just pause over there. We've been told that we shouldn't be uninformed. 
that you, you've got a gift, and it's not for your sake, it's for the common good. We've been told that we'd eagerly desire the gifts, and especially the gift of prophecy. And now we're being told that we shouldn't neglect the gift either, because some of us, perhaps you, you received a gift maybe 30 years ago, maybe you operated in the gift for a little while, but perhaps now you've neglected it. And so we're being encouraged here uh, in the book of Timothy that we should not neglect the gift. We shouldn't let it lying there just getting full of dust that, no, we need to put the gift to practice. Let's carry on here. Do not neglect your gift which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. You see, we were to not neglect the gift but we're to practice the gift, we're to give ourselves wholly to operating in the gifts, and there should be progress that should be visible, that, that the people in your, your, your home group, your community connect group, that the people uh, that you, you have coffee and tea with, uh, your friends, your family, they should be able to see your progression in the gift. This is challenging, right? Because it's a little bit like going to gym operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I mean, imagine if you go to gym and on, on day number one, you haven't been in a gym for 15 years. You walk into the gym, big stuff. And, uh, and you remember 15 years ago, you, you used to curl the 30 kgs because you were, you were strong and you think, okay, I haven't been in gym for a while. Let me just, let me just go for the 15. Kgs, half of what you used to be, and you pick up the 15 kgs and you can't even hold the, the, the dumbbell that falls out your hand because your grip strength isn't strong enough. <laughs> and so, okay, let's just go a little bit lower. And so you eventually end up with the 5 kgs. And, uh, and you curl the 5 kgs and next morning comes and you feel like someone has broken your arms. <laughs> you can't move. You can't type, you have to type at your computer like this because you can't bend your elbow. <laughs> and now you choose to be diligent. You choose to, to not neglect the, the health of your body. And so every day you go to gym. And every day you go back to those 5 kgs and you pick them up and you exercise those 5 kgs for the next 30 years. You just stay with the five kgs. Is that progress? No. Now I'm using a silly example, but, but I want to stir us and challenge us to say, some of us, I think we've got stuck on the five kgs. We're like, yeah, I'm operating in the gift of, of the Holy Spirit, and I'm, I'm still, look, I'm still moving it. I'm still working out. You might still be working out, but are you progressing? Are you picking up the 6 kgs and the 7 and the 10? And, and are you getting to the 30 kgs looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Holy Spirit version? <laughs> you see, we're, we're called to progress in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that we'll move forward, that we will grow, that we will mature, that we'll become more accurate, uh, more powerful, more frequent in operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do not neglect your gift. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. It says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but it gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Do not neglect the gift. Eagerly desire the gift. Fan the gift into flame. We have a responsibility to do something with the gifts that we have from the Lord. We like to remind us here at Breakthrough that we're all in full-time ministry. Anyone ever heard that before a Breakthrough? You're in full-time ministry? If you haven't heard it, you haven't been around long enough. You're all in full-time ministry. What does that mean? That means that, that we're all called to be ministers of the Lord every day, not just on Sunday morning. You see, in, in 1 Peter, uh, I think it's chapter 2, verse 9, it says that we are a royal priesthood. That means that, that you are part of his royal family. He's invited you into his family. He's adopted you. You're, you're his sons, you're his daughters, but he's also made you a priest. Now, a priest is not 
only someone that, that serves in a more traditional church and wears a dress. Um, a priest is you. You are a priest. Because what is the responsibility of a priest? That you'll be a minister unto God, but you'll also be a minister from God unto one another. And so we've become a royal priesthood. You're in full-time ministry because the Lord wants you to be a priest in your workplace. The Lord wants you to be a priest in your school. The Lord wants you to be a priest in your street, in your neighborhood, in your community. He wants you to be a priest in your city that you might be a source of hope, of encouragement, of comfort, of life to the people that are around you because you're gifted not for your sake. You're gifted for their sake. I mean, imagine now if... Um, you know, if this was building school. The Bible uses uh, picture language to describe the church, and one of the common pictures we have about the church is that we're a building. Um, and so if we're building the body, Jesus is building, building his body, his church. Um, but if we're in building school and we're learning how to construct a house, imagine if uh, every day we went to class, we went to lectures, and all we learned was theory. And we never, ever, ever actually got our hands dirty and figured out how do you actually mix the mortar? How, how much sand? How much water? How much cement? What does it feel like? How do you place the bricks? How do you get a straight line? How do you pour the foundation? How do you dig the foundation? Imagine if it was all just theory and we never actually got practical. Well, I think the first time we tried to build a house, it probably wouldn't be a very stable, strong house. Probably it would fall over at some point. Is that... Would you agree with me? You see, when we come to church, we, we can't just talk theory all the time. Sometimes we've got to get practical. We, we, we can't just talk about all the things that we need to do. Sometimes we need to do the things that we're called to do because this is a place of equipping. You see, my job, John's job, we're, we're not called to do all this stuff ourselves. Uh, no, we're called to equip you to do all this stuff. And so part of the equipping is if, if we just tell you about the stuff that you need to do and never actually let you do it and show you how to do it, well, then we're not really doing our jobs. And uh, we're not fulfilling the full call that we have uh, as a body, as a church. And so we're going to get practical this morning. Someone say amen. amen. So when it comes to this gift of prophecy that we've been instructed to eagerly desire, to seek, to not neglect, but to pursue, uh, we're going to operate in that gift a little bit this morning. And as we do that, I just want to encourage us as well. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, it says, Do not quench the spirit. Um, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. So we're going to do this in a, in a little while. I'm going to coach us how to, how to do it. I'm going to pray that there will be an equipping for you to be able to do it. And when we do it, some of us are going to prophesy for the first time today. It's going to be glorious. Um, and that means we're going to make some mistakes, and that's okay. The Scripture even tells us that we see in part, we prophesy in part, and so no one sees the full picture. And that's why the Scriptures very clearly tell us that we need to weigh, we need to judge, we need to test the prophetic words that we receive. And so the onus is on you as a receiver of a prophetic word to test that word prayerfully before the Lord. That you'll bring it before him and say, okay, God, this is the word I received. Help me to discern what is good, what is right, what is from you. And perhaps maybe where did the person make a mistake? Because we're going to make mistakes today. And so the safety net is that we as the receivers, we weigh, we judge, we test um, all prophetic words. It doesn't matter who it comes from, we test all the words. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 22 to verse 25, it says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Oh, that's a challenging scripture verse right there. If we merely just listen to the word, uh, we can fall into a deception because there's a greater understanding, a greater dimension of truth that we step into when we do the word and we don't just listen to the word. So this morning we're going to do the word. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Verse 23, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. 
Let's just pause on that for a moment. I mean, that's a crazy analogy, isn't it? I mean, imagine this morning, you're the latecomer, so you slept in late, you, you had a coffee or a breakfast, you got dressed, you put your Sunday best on, you looked in the mirror to check how you look, and, uh, and you turn aside from the mirror and you're like, oh, did I get dressed yet this morning? Did I, did I brush my hair? Wait, have I got hair? What, what do I look like again? That's what it's saying it's like when we don't practice the word. Uh, We can carry on with the the last verse over there. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. If we want to walk in the blessing of the Lord, we've got to do something with what we've received. We've got to put to practice what we've received. We've got to fan into flame the gift that we've received. We've got to eagerly desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially prophecy. And when we've got it, we need to not neglect it, but we need to steward it that we might progress in the gift and grow and mature. And so a couple ground rules before we get practical. Um, And so 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, we've covered. Prophecy is there to strengthen. It's there to encourage. It's there to comfort. And so if you share a word this morning that is outline or out of order, it doesn't fulfill one of those three um, requirements, strengthening, encouraging, comforting, then don't share it. You're not allowed to share it. It's outside of the boundaries of what is in play for this gift of prophecy. The other thing where where we we, we is out of order is if you prophesy that anyone's going to have a hatch, a match, or a dispatch. That means someone's going to um, fall pregnant, hatch, someone's going to find their marriage partner, a match, or that you're their marriage partner, um, or that someone's going to die. That is out of bounds. And so if we find you doing that, then we're going to give you the right hand of fellowship. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) We, We won't do that, but we will please ask you if you do it again that we will not allow you around here because you're not keeping to the rules of the the house. And so these are the rules of the house that we see set on inscription. This is to create an environment of safety so that we can learn, so that we can grow, that we can progress in the gift. And to do that, we need to have a safe environment um, for that to take place. Um, so what we're going to do this morning, uh, we're going to put Psalm uh, chapter 23. If you've got your Bible, open up to Psalm 23. I know I've read a lot of scripture, but I haven't asked you to read with me yet. So open up your Bible, uh, whether you've got an app or a paper version to Psalm chapter 23, uh, because what we're going to do now is we're going to use Psalm 23 as an inspiration to give a prophetic, encouraging word to someone else this morning. Um, And so we see this through the scriptures. We see Jesus, I think it's 78 times, uh, quoting or referencing uh, the old covenants. So Jesus used the the scriptures uh, to speak, to teach, to prophesy, uh, to speak life. We're going to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Uh, Psalm chapter 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. All right, I'm going to quickly show us how to do this, and I'm going to give a word to a number of people. So if you're a business owner and you feel that there's been like a a, a spiritual attack or like a you're in a spiritual battle in your business um, workplace, not personally, but, but you're a business owner and you feel that you're not just going through a difficult time. It's not that just the economy's down. You feel that there's almost a spiritual attack against you. Is there anyone that you, you feel that this morning could I ask you to raise your hand? Okay, why don't you, all of you stand? I felt that there would be a few of you this morning. Um, and so the word I have for you is uh, from verse 5. It says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And I felt that the Lord is going to be pouring out wisdom. His anointing on your head speaks of his wisdom coming upon you, that you will have practical wisdom and solutions to overcome the obstacles that are, are being brought against you. And that with the wisdom and the anointing that the Lord, Lord brings, you will overcome and you will see breakthrough. And uh, we, we pray that your portion may be that your cup overflows. Amen. God bless you guys. The scripture also says that those that seek wisdom, it's James 1.5, I think, that the Father is good and faithful. He gives wisdom to those that ask. So uh, seek the Lord for wisdom, um, and that, that'll be, may that be your portion. So that's how we do it. I used the scripture, used a verse that the Lord highlighted to me for a particular group of people, and then used that to give an encouraging prophetic word. You guys ready? Why don't you stand and put your hands up, because I'm going to pray that this gift gets poured out into our lives that we will receive this gift in a new and fresh, powerful way. And so whether you've operated in this gift for decades, we're going to ask the Lord for more that we will progress. If you've never operated in this gift, we're going to say, Lord, well, the scripture says that I'm supposed to eagerly desire this gift. I don't know what that looks like. I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little bit afraid. But I know that the scripture also says that you haven't given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And so, Lord, I want to be obedient because I want to put your kingdom first in my life. You in agreement? Yes. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the promise that, that the Holy Spirit was going to come, and we live in that day. We live in that day. We're so grateful, Lord. We're so grateful for the outpouring, the baptism of Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of Holy Spirit that accompany this baptism. And we, we, this morning, eagerly desire the gifts, Lord. And we eagerly desire, especially the gift of prophecy, that you will speak to us and that we will be able to speak your message, your heart to others. Thank you, Lord. And so we thank you for an outpouring, for just an, uh, a fresh awakening, and for the gift of prophecy to be released into every heart in this room and online this morning. Receive from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So as you're still receiving, it's, it's a little bit like, like what I do with my girls. I, I, I often call my girls, and uh, they're, they're seven and four, and I'll, I'll call one of them or both of them. I'll say, girls, 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 come here, come here. Quickly, stop what you're doing. Come here. This is important. And they, they, they come and Normally, they first respond a little bit like, what's going on? Why is dad getting so serious with us? Come sit on my lap. Come over here. I need to tell you something very important. This is really, really important. Look at me in my eyes. Don't look around. Look at me in my eyes. Daddy loves you. And they say, we know, daddy. You tell us every day. <laughs> you see, the heart of a father is just to tell his children how much he loves them. And, uh, and their sons and daughters next to you right now and Father wants to tell them how much He loves them and that He's got them and that He wants to strengthen them, encourage them, and comfort them. And you know what? He wants you to receive that strength, courage, and comfort, but He also wants you to be the messenger that gives that strength, that courage, and that comfort. Amen? He's a good Father and He has good intentions for us. So if you're online, what you can just do is you can maybe... Take out your address phone book and ask the Lord, who needs an encouraging prophetic word today? And then send them a WhatsApp text and go ahead, be a source of strength, encouragement, and comfort. Um, for those in the room, what we're going to do is uh, first row is going to turn to second row, uh, third to fourth, uh, fifth to sixth. And so you'll be facing someone and you're going to pair up. So pair up with someone is what we're doing right now. As you turn around, you need a partner because we're going to practice operating in this gift because we don't want to be deceived. We want to do uh, what we've learned. So if you haven't got a partner, put your hand up and find someone else with their hand raised and that's your partner. All right. Everyone got a partner? If you haven't got a partner, look around the room for someone else with their hand raised. All right, so what we're going to do, once you've got a partner, choose who's going to go first. You're going to use Psalm 23, or you can use a different scripture if the Lord speaks to you through a different scripture, but we're going to use scripture to give a prophetic word, a strengthening, encouraging, or comforting word. And uh, choose who's going first. I'm going to give you just 60 seconds each, and then after that, we'll swap and have a chance to receive. So thank you, Lord, that you speak. One, two, three, go.
All right, 10 seconds for the first person to finish up. All right, first person stop, second person is your chance to prophesy. So the person that just received is now going to give a prophetic word, and you got a minute, go for it. Fifteen seconds. All right. And stop. All right. Stay standing, but turn around, face the face back to the stage. How many of you received an encouraging, strengthening, comforting, prophetic word? Wow, look around the room. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, let's celebrate the Lord. He's a speaking God. He's not a mute idol. He's not a dead tree. He's alive and He speaks and He's speaking. It's kind of like there's frequency, radio frequency in the room. If we tuned our antenna into that frequency, we could hear what's being broadcast on that frequency. God is a speaking God and He's speaking all of the time. And so we're able to tune into the frequency of heaven and hear what God is saying and deliver messages on behalf of Him. Now let's not get South African, okay? Because what do we normally do when... When you, you speak to a friend or, you know, a neighbor, you, you hear bad news. You hear of someone that's in need of strength, that's in need of courage, that's in need of comfort. And what do you say? Yo. Oh, shame, man. Yo. Shame. Yo. Yo. That's hectic, eh? Yo. Shame. Yo. Yo. Ish. Yo. Yo. Eish. Shame. It's hectic. Yo. All right, so you've been equipped now. The next time when you hear someone needing strength and courage or comfort, you don't give them the South Africanism. Yo. Ish. Hectic, man. No, what do you do? You say, man, you won't believe it, but I've got a word for you. I've got a word of strength of courage and comfort for you because I, I know a God and He's a speaking God and, and He wants to change this situation. He's got life for you in this situation and He wants to transform this situation. Come on. So we're going to do this one more time because the Scripture tells us that we need to practice these gifts. So maybe everyone that was facing the back will now take two steps to your right and you'll have a new partner in front of you. If you're at the end of the, the, the auditorium, then swing all the way around to the other side. But the point is find a new partner. Not someone that you know, not someone that you came with, uh, because we're going to practice this again. So we're going to do it a second time. We're going to use Psalm 23 or a scripture to give a prophetic word. Uh, I really want to encourage you, step out and do this, and you will find that the Lord wants to speak to you. You've got to engage with it, uh, overcome the fear, take the step of risk, and you'll see the Lord moving. If you haven't got a partner, put your hand up, look around the room for someone else with their hand raised. I'm going to give you guys 60 seconds for the first person to go. Uh, one, two, three, go for it.
10 seconds for the first person to finish up. All right, first person should stop, second person can go. You got 60 seconds, go for it. Ten seconds. All right. And stop. All right. Shh. I think this must be a sign. The rain being poured out. The Lord's pouring out His Spirit upon His people. How many of you received another encouraging, strengthening, comforting word? Come on, there's a God and He's speaking. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I want to encourage you. The Lord speaks in a variety of ways. He speaks through Scripture, as we've just uh, discovered now. The Lord speaks in pictures. Sometimes in, in your spirit eye, you'll see a picture. The Lord wants to speak through that. Sometimes you'll see a vision. It's like a, a, a motion moving something. The Lord will speak uh, through, through visions that you see. The Lord will speak through dreams, uh, dreams in the nighttime, daydreams. The Lord wants to speak to you. The Lord speaks uh, through color. Color has meaning. The Lord speaks through uh, numbers. Numbers have meaning. Uh, the Lord speaks through our senses, our smell, our feelings, our emotions. The Lord speaks in a variety of ways. Let me quickly tell you one quick testimony as we close. When we were building this auditorium, uh, we were building for cash. We, we felt the Lord say we needed to build for cash, and that was the approach we needed to take. And so we, we reached the point where we had poured the foundation. We were now starting to brick up the walls uh, that are downstairs holding up uh, the building. And so we said to the building contractor, what is the cost for the building of the bricks and how many weeks do you think it'll take? And let's build in a bit of uh, provision for some extra time. We know there's often delays, rain, and et cetera. Uh, we get the total number of weeks, the total cost of the, the, the brickwork, and uh, we say, okay, that's what it is. I'm sitting in my office. I take the total number of weeks, divided, well, the total cost divided by the number of weeks, punch it in my calculator, equals... The number comes to 55,555 rand, exactly. Now you see the, the number five has a meaning and it means grace. And five fives is like double portion grace. God was saying to us, I've got this and I've got you. And so we didn't have the money, but we built all the walls and the money came as we needed it and more than. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord speaks in so many ways. When we were finishing the auditorium upstairs, one of the last things we were doing, I was at a, a, a kind of hardware store buying a whole bunch of little consumable things, nuts, bolts, screws, little things like that. It was 10 or 12 items and uh, ring it up at the till. And what does the amount come to? 555 rand and 50 cents. And look at what till number? Till number five, five fives. Come on, Jesus. The Lord is speaking all the time, and He wants to open up our hearts, our spirit, to see, to um, be aware, to be alert, and to share messages on His behalf. And so I want to encourage you, go about this week and, and say, Lord, will you speak to me? Maybe get up a little bit earlier in the morning and say, Lord, 
Will you speak to me that I might give a word of strength and courage or comfort to someone I meet today? And then as you go about your day, be on the, the lookout for that person that you might be a blessing to them. And if they don't know Jesus, or maybe once you've given them an encouraging word, tell them about Jesus and maybe lead them uh, in a salvation prayer that they might come to know the Lord. Uh, but as we go downstairs, it's raining, so you can't leave. Go and enjoy some tea or coffee and uh, find someone else. Give them an encouraging prophetic word. Practice the gift. Uh, but before you leave, we have got some ministry, so our ministry team can come up to the front. If you need healing in your body, uh, we're going to be available to pray for you and a couple of things that we felt the Lord was highlighting. So I just want to say, I asked the Father yesterday what was on his heart to heal, and I heard, I heard an eardrum, um, and that's what I shared in the first service. What I just heard now, and after the first service, a lady came to me, and she said her left eardrum. Francois just shared with me that his wife, Carla, shared with him left eardrum. I prayed for that lady after the first service, and she approached me at the end uh, downstairs after that. She, she had a clicking noise in her left eardrum. And, and every time she swallows, the clicking sound irritates her. She said as she was pouring tea downstairs, the clicking sound just disappeared. God. It's a Thank speaking you. God. Thank it's you, a Jesus. speaking God. So I still want to pray for anyone's eardrum and then also lungs, any lung, especially asthma. Um, anyone struggling with anxiety, I'd like to pray for that. All sickness, obviously, but then specifically skin disease and ears also. All right. Amen. God is opening ears that we will hear in the natural and in the spiritual. Our uh, ministry team can come up to the front. If you don't know Jesus and you want to know more about him, maybe you received a prophetic word this morning and you say, I'm intrigued. I need to know more. I want to invite you. Come to the cross and uh, we'd love to pray with you and lead you into a relationship with Jesus. If you have any other prayer need, we'll be available. But uh, go and enjoy tea, coffee downstairs. Thanks for everyone that joined us online. Have a glorious, glorious week. We'll see you next week, Sunday. Till then, God bless.